So good morning, friends. I could hear many of you uh, chatting, and that's so lovely. I guess it's a common platform for all of us to, uh, you know, catch up and have a great camaraderie. Um, so I would love to welcome all of you on behalf of the Get and Get Fit team. Uh, my name is Dr. Vidya Hari Ayer, and uh, I stay in Chennai. And it's a proud privilege to have uh, all of you at the Get and Get Fit series today. Uh, before I go on with the speaker and his credentials, I would like to tell you what Get and Get Fit uh, is all about. So, uh, I'm sure uh, 14 months back, none of us knew that our life would turn 360 degrees, right? Uh, but uh, as life has changed, I guess all of us uh, started uh, instead of running in the, uh, you know, in the park or uh, doing some kind of exercise in the park, we all started doing it at home. And that's when uh, I thought, why not have a common media uh, where all our friends can meet up. And that's how we started the Get In, Get Fit uh, WhatsApp group that was started sometime in uh, April of 2020. And for the first uh, three, four months, uh, we were not a structured team. We just uh, got in every day and uh, we were just trying to do some form of exercise, uh, saying hi, hello to friends, uh, catching up with our uh, everyday activities. Uh, but then there was a turning point in my life. Uh, I lost one of my friends, a very close friend of mine, uh, to the pandemic and uh, uh, my entire world uh, came crumbling down. Uh, the reason I say that is uh, this girl was uh, full of dreams and she just got married three months back. And uh, that uh, really shook me, uh, not only as a doctor, as a, as a psychotherapist and a counselor, uh, but it shook me as a person. So even though we put a straight face and have a smile always, uh, there are times when we get personally affected too, right? And uh, those were the moments when I thought that I need to uh, render these services of mine to a larger audience. So uh, this happened on the 29th of July when I lost her. And two days later, uh, on 1st of August, I started uh, with a structured series of Get and Get Fit. So let me uh, introduce Get In, Get Fit for all of you. Our mission is uh, to uh, touch uh, 10,000 people's life in a year's time. And I can proudly tell you today is the 44th week. Uh, and I can only thank God for this uh, benevolence and grace that he has had on all of us that we have been able to go on. Initially, it just started as a three-month program, a 90 days challenge where uh, we said, let's uh, start doing some kind of pranayam, uh, breathing exercise, something like that, uh, and uh, put it uh, on the WhatsApp group. And then, as I told you, we had an expert speaker every Saturday, 10 to 11. And uh, every week, uh, I started roping in my friends, uh, and uh, we had an amazing series for uh, three months. But what happened after that was... Uh, I started getting uh, flooding uh, replies uh, from my friends saying that, oh, here is a friend of mine who would love to be a speaker. And so the journey continued. And we celebrated our 25th Silver Jubilee celebrations in January. I thought, okay, after Silver Jubilee, uh, I guess I'm going to call it a day. But, uh, you know, we just got stronger and more focused, I guess. And uh, today we are heading towards us, our Golden Jubilee celebrations. And I would just take a minute to welcome all of you to the, uh, you know, the Golden Jubilee celebrations. Uh, it has been marked for July uh, 10. So please keep that Saturday uh, free so that all of us can meet once again at this uh, virtual platform. And uh, we have a lot of mentors uh, on our uh, board. We started with uh, just uh, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays for uh, Surya Namaskarams, uh, breathing and pranayam, uh, yoga. Uh, Tuesdays for meditation, Fridays for uh, a little bit of dance therapy. Then we had our uh, Saturday sessions. Uh, so Saturday, Sunday, we didn't do uh, much of physical exercise. People who wanted were doing it uh, for themselves. 
but then after the 25th episode i guess uh, we started thinking about all seven days a week and uh, today we have uh, from 6:20 to 7 a.m. every single day. We have many mentors who have roped in uh, with this uh, one thought that you know we all just wanted to contribute towards good health, a holistic way of life, where we concentrate on uh, heart, body, mind, and soul. So it is not only about physical transformations or uh, you know uh, reducing your uh, body uh, weight. Uh, we thought we needed to give a holistic approach, a very scientific based approach to people who walk into our Get and Get Fit team. We also started our Pamper Yourself series, and uh, this was uh, another initiative because we said that you know we needed to look good. because most of us are in uh, front of the uh, either zoom or any other uh, you know platform where we needed to look good as we are uh, presenting uh, whatever we are talking on right so that is how we started our get in and uh, pamper yourself series and with that short note i would like to uh, bring on board our speaker for the day sn Uh, I used to call him Natarajan Sir, but he said I have no knighthood, so I don't want that, Sir. It took me a while to call him an SN, uh, but uh, nevertheless, that's how he's popularly known. And uh, many of us at Get and Get Fit, like uh, Kanan Sir and Usha Ma'am, are uh, his great friends. And thank you so much for being here, and all the friends all over, uh, I guess, uh, India today, who have uh, roped in uh, and gotten here. So let me introduce uh, SN for all of you. And uh, where should I start? So when I was interacting with SN, I came uh, to know he's from Thane, Bombay, and uh, that is where I spent the first few years of my life with my parents. And uh, it is uh, obviously a very nostalgic feeling because I used to go to Bombay till. Uh, just before the covid at least four times a year uh, i used to render my services as a laser dentist at dy patel mumbai and had i known i would have definitely uh, uh, wanted to bump into sn to know him a little more better but nevertheless uh, i guess you know all of us uh, uh, just uh, learn about each other much more as we understand uh, what we have in store for us right and uh, what gives me great pleasure in knowing uh, natarajan sir as i would want to call him here uh, is that uh, the kind of person he has uh, toned himself to be or honed himself to be in the last 4 years he has got some amazing achievements to his credit and i know you are all waiting to hear those from his own mouth right he's been a long distance runner for the I last few years it. a trainer in maf principles of holistic I'm approach gonna... towards running he has various 10 kilometers 21 kilometers and three full marathons to his credit no no his first full marathon came after his 50th birthday and that was at a uh, you know they generally call a pace and that is uh, the way at which you run and that he finished in 4 hours 9 minutes and the second uh, full marathon generally we say we are not in a competition with anybody we just want to get better than what we were yesterday so his second full marathon he completed in 3 hours and 59 uh, minutes he leverages his nasal breathing into his running which apparently gives a nitric oxide which is the first level of defense against bacteria virus or any other infection and he's worked in tata motors for over 25 years so here's presenting uh, mr rsn for you our expert speaker of the day at the session uh, 38 rsn the floor is all yours thank you so much uh, dr vidya for this uh, uh, fantastic uh, opportunity um, thanks to every one of my friends and runners and then all the people who are over here to come and participate uh, over here thanks so much and uh, uh, i just want to uh, tell you people how i got amazed by looking at uh, getting get fit uh, i used to conduct some of the book reading meets um in my capacity and uh, if i want to call people for the first week 
they would come to our tree and the second week uh, it would become uh, the sustenance issue that uh, week after week uh, conducting meeting is becoming a big issue but then uh, seeking taking time out of your uh, uh, entire schedule on uh, every saturday for consecutive 44 uh, weeks week after week it takes a great great uh, conviction i think the entire group of get and get fit has that conviction and that is why this is going on and i wish them all the very best for the golden jubilee which is going to be the 50th week again i am sure that 52nd week is also going to become a very important uh, milestone because it will be completing one year and then many more such years and what avayar has had uh, the poet of uh, 2500 years before she was mentioning that it is very difficult to uh, born as a human being it is even more difficult to born uh, without any uh, physical deformities and it is even more challenging to get educated and then uh, get knowledge and it is much more uh, difficult even to pass on the knowledge and uh, if you do all these things then probably you would be going directly to heaven and that is what she mentioned about and uh, similarly what uh, the great uh, poet subramanya bharati has said who has lived in our, uh, our era he uh, says that uh, while the uh, india may have uh, 30 crore faces uh, she has only one uh, a focus is to get independence if my interpretation point of time would be that we all need to have one purpose in life uh, the purpose cannot be different for uh, each one of us the purpose has to be a uh, same for every one of us which is the goal and what is my purpose cannot be different than what any of your purpose is uh, so the my interpretation of the single purpose is that our human race has to progress forward it has to get evolved over the period in a nice manner so uh, when we say this how this can happen it can happen only when we are healthy as an individual we are healthy as a family and we are healthy as a whole in the society so what is more important is that um, uh, uh, once you achieve this health once you achieve some sort of uh, wealth then we should be achieving ourselves at a full potential the full potential is can be different for different people one may be a doctor one may be an engineer you have to strive in your own area and then try to achieve the full potential by contributing to the society country and then a globe as a uh, in a big picture if you look at the big picture this is how we should get evolved so the purpose is uh, common the purpose is unison for all the people be it 800 800 uh, uh, crore of people in the world or be it 140 crore of people in india so the purpose is similar so coming back to the point i was talking about myself that uh, i had a continuous fever for almost 50 days and uh, these uh, at the end of the 50 days uh, there was a report which stated uh, uh, when i interpreted to google that it stated that i have a dreaded cancer but it was not so but then uh, uh, having uh, started the treatment for tuberculosis for 9 months it was very important for me that i should not uh, get the cancer ever so i again uh, did some research and then found out that vitamin d is one of the best way to avoid uh, the cancer so in order to get the vitamin b uh, there are two vitamin d there are two sources one is food by itself and the second is the sunlight so i started running in the sunlight and uh, when you once you do the running then obviously there will be lot of uh, uh, difficulties because you are starting the run it is it is common for everyone and i also suffered for initial two or three months or so after that i slowly picked up the cardiovascular system very well so uh, that is how the running journey started and uh, once i uh, ran for almost a year also i made a marked improvement and uh, at the end of the year i uh, had a privilege of running in uh, chennai and uh, uh, mr Sang- kannan sangrambadi was uh, uh, one of the pacer uh, pacers where where he used to send a lot of runners so um, uh, coming to the point that at the end of the one year i was seeing that lot of uh, runners are dying around me uh that there are very good runners who are dying around me and then there are uh, normal runners who are dying around me when i'm saying very good runners they are seemingly fit so after that i stopped doing and w- once uh, i i when foreigners write about uh, uh, pranayama and all i tend to follow i tend to follow them not when the indian says uh, why because uh, normally the indians do not convey the do not convey the signs right. so uh, normally indians do not record and they do not convey the signs the foreigners what they do they convey the signs and they uh, 
talk about big big things about indians and it reaches finally to indians so we are very poor recorders even if one or two people would have written much much uh, 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 very good science we would have forgotten all those things because we never respect uh, our own uh, science we when we start hearing when others are uh, saying so i also ended up uh, reading the oxygen advantage books and that is about nasal breathing the third thing what i uh, read about is that how to make a very using a chi running so first of all i would like to take up nasal breathing so that uh, the three nasal breathing principles i want to demonstrate uh, very slowly so that we can get on to math later so the uh, one of the fundamental uh, concept of uh, nasal breathing is that the breathing has to be done through nose and not to be done through mouth so uh, i would like to explain three exercises one by one so that you may try to follow them uh, which is all known to us but i would like to explain the science also sometime later so uh, i'm sorry so the first exercise is known as a body oxygen level test which is known as bolt b o l t body oxygen level test in this exercise what we are supposed to do is as soon as we get up in the morning uh, we have to get up on the bed and then sit on the bed take normal breathing when we say normal breathing inhale exhale inhale exhale inhale exhale like that for a minute or so after that exhale then pinch the nose when you are pinching the nose on the exhaled condition keep the mouth shut complete and hold the breath on the exhaled position and note down the timer when there is a first urge of breathing when when you feel the first urge of breathing that time you let your nose and then start taking the breath in through nose only because you have held the breath for let's say uh, whatever time you will be having a strong urge to open your mouth and breathe please don't do that so let me explain once again you do normal inhale exhale normal inhale exhale and then some point of time you exhale then pinch the nose close your mouth start recording your time how much time you can able to hold during the first urge of breathing you release the pinched nose and then take the breath in this is the first exercise you should do at least twice a day and then uh, the 40 level if you reach 40 seconds you are very good you are uh, doing very really very good and uh, anything score about 25 and below 40 is considered to be more of a functional you are okay functionally but then you are not great and below 25 is sub optimal level or i would say that uh, not so great you need to surely improve so this is the first exercise i hope you guys have understood and anyone having a doubt maybe you can contact me later either through messenger or getting the number from dr vidya the second exercise is very well known take your uh, two thumb fingers close your ears and of course you can close your eyes as well your mouth of course you have to close and start chanting om when you say om the mouth will be open and the moment you start saying m the mouth will be obviously closed then om like this you do you stretch the breathing as much as possible when you are doing this you would be exhaling 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 when you are chanting that m when you are chanting that there will be lot of vibrations we will come to that later this is the second exercise the third exercise is that again you take a counter you take a, a stopwatch or counter and start looking at the counter and do the breathing when you do the breathing you inhale for let's say 4 seconds or so and you exhale for 6 seconds or you inhale for 3 seconds and exhale for 6 and 4 uh, and a half seconds so if inhale is one the exhale has to be one and a half sort of ratio like that you keep doing uh, the breathing you need to lengthen the breath which means the inhale time plus exhale time what we call as one breathing the time has to keep on going higher and higher as you pass the day for example the day one maybe you are in a position to do only 2 seconds of inhale and 3 and a half seconds of uh, exhale and like that you need to keep improving so there, it is always said that the himalaya saints are hardly breathing for 2 seconds sorry uh, two breathing in a minute the cadence of breathing is much much slower so uh, now let us understand the concept the understand the science behind this these are the three exercises the exercise 2 what i mentioned about the om chanting 
and the exercise three, which is the slowing down of the breathing, can be combined together if you want to save time. So if you do these two, which we normally do, most of us do, it is nothing rocket science we are talking about. But the science I'm going to tell you is much more important, which some of us may not be knowing, and most of some of us may be knowing also. So the point is that when we are doing the uh, uh, nasal breathing, I'd like to understand about the how the breathing process takes place. Let's say the air comes in and then the oxygen molecules go through our nose, then it passes through the pharynx and then it goes through trachea and then it goes to the bronchi. From the bronchi, there are two tubes, the bronchi tubes go into the two lungs. Let's say the left lung has, let's say the smaller lung has two lobes and the right lung, the, uh, the larger lungs has three, three lobes. So it passes through the lungs and then it, it goes through bronchiole and then it goes to alveole like that. It goes through those air sacs. The blood is also flowing and the oxygen which is getting released from that air sacs gets mixed with the blood. The, the, so far the blood color is different. When, once that uh, uh, oxygen is getting mixed, then it becomes uh, red in color because of the oxidation process. Then the oxygen goes through the arteries. Normally, the oxygenated blood goes through the arteries and the deoxygenated blood. Once that uh, uh, it comes back, it is known as coming through veins. So now the blood is going through the arteries. You may be knowing the blood has got various components we call as plasma, we call as RBCs. By now, we would have become expert by uh, analyzing our blood through various our own reports like WBCs and all those stuff. One of the components is RBC and then the RBC, we have hemoglobin. So this hemoglobin is the uh, protein which is the carrier of the oxygen and it goes to various, various arteries. At the end of the arteries, again, it gets branched out to uh, various capillaries. The capillaries are finer in uh, section and that is how the, it goes through. Now at the same time when I'm explaining science about the uh, blood, how the blood is first of all getting flowing. So there is a heart, of course, that is also here by the lung, which is well protected by the thoracic cage, our uh, chest cage, and then that uh, heart is pumping. So now there are two factors. One is the heart rate, the rate at which the blood is pumping. Second is blood is flowing with some pressure. Let's say when the heart is not pumping, that is available at one pressure. And when the heart is pumping, the blood is traveling with another pressure. So there are two different pressures. We also know about this, that uh, systolic and diastolic. The systolic is the upper number, diastolic is the lower number, which we all know. So when the, when the uh, oxygen is flowing through the blood, the blood is the carrier, the hemoglobin is the carrier. We also see in the reports that we need to have 13 to 17% of hemoglobin for male members, somewhere around 13 to 16% for female members. Some, some specification is given. So if the hemoglobin content is less, then the carrier of the oxygen itself is less. So the oxygen cannot be taken forward. So in, in an efficient manner. So first of all, we need to improve our hemoglobin. So this is one aspect of it. Second aspect of it is that the blood, which is going through the arteries, that has got a diameter and it has got some deposits because of our aging. So because the, if the diameter is constricted and there are a lot of deposits, the diameter will be further reducing. The blood will exert a lot of pressure onto the wall while flowing because there are a lot of resistance uh, for flow. So that is a higher blood pressure what we normally call. Okay. Coming back to the point that the hemoglobin is a carrying and at that point of time, uh, the oxygen has to go to the cells. How the oxygen can go to the cells? It cannot go by itself. It, it needs some dissociation which has to take place from the blood. Dissociation meaning the blood and the oxygen has to get detached. That has to happen. You may know that the blood and oxygen are having immense bonding pressure. Like the way we are all well bonded, we are all a single family. Even the blood and oxygen is also immensely bonded. It cannot get separated out so easily. If it has to get out, if the oxygen has to get out, you can do with only one thing, which is carbon dioxide. We normally think the carbon dioxide is bad. No, it is not bad. It is absolutely essential gas, which is very much needed for maintaining our pH level of the blood, which is very much needed for dilating the blood vessels, and which is very much needed for dissociation of the oxygen from the blood. Unless the blood is the unless the oxygen is dissociated, it cannot go to the cells. The moment it reaches cell, oxygen reaches cell, 
the nutrients are present there it goes and uh, forms the oxidation process and then once the oxidation happens the energy production happens at the same time of energy production lot of free radicals also get produced which is bad and also carbon dioxide gets produced which need to be thrown out so these bad things will again go back by we veins so while going forward the arteries are being used while coming back these are being used while going forward the oxygenated blood while coming back it is deoxygenated blood when going forward it is 100% oxygenated blood when it is coming back it is 70% oxygenated blood and 30% only gone through the muscle why 30% only gone through the muscle because we are not doing cardiovascular exercise if we do cardiovascular exercise the 100% blood will go and only 60% blood will come back if we do more cardiovascular it will 100% will go and 50% will come back if we do more and more regularly consistently four days in a week like that if we do then 30% only oxygenated blood will come back the rest are all this is that deoxygenated blood the deoxygenated blood so i hope you guys have understood the process of the arteries taking the 100% oxygenated blood and veins supplying back the deoxygenated blood there is going to be always a delta the delta is lesser for example 170 for a person who is not doing exercise he may be very healthy she may be very healthy but uh, maximum nutrients maximum oxygen needs to flow in in order to get this benefit of this so this is where the uh, the function of the oxygen the blood on all all we spoke about now uh the breathing when we say uh, we should not be doing the deep breathing normally when we say deep breathing karo deep breathing karo which me, uh, de- do the deep breathing which means that throughout the entire uh, carbon dioxide available in our body no it, it should not be done <sighs> should not be done so when you are doing some exercise for example uh, typical breathing exercise like kapal bhati or whatever you are doing a typical breathing exercise that should be done only during that point of time of exercise that should not be extended for normal living and normal breathing no when you are doing normal living and normal breathing apart from the exercise time you are supposed to breathe slowly you are supposed to breathe, breathe lightly you are supposed to breathe deeply deeply the definition is somewhat different over here when we say slowly we spoke about uh, two uh, breath per minute we spoke about three breath per minute that is how you should keep practicing that is how the slow breathing has to happen the light breathing has to happen in such a manner the difference between slow and light is we have nasal air inside our na- nose to filter out the intake these even the nasal air should not move that sort of light breathing we should do now the third point about breathing is deep breathing when we say uh, deep breathing uh, do the deep breathing which, which means that it has to start from no pause and the the breath has to go inside inside the thoracic cage at the below there is a thing called diaphragm it's like a disc it's like a disc of the shape this functioning like a piston in our vehicle it goes up and down when it goes down the entire lung is enlarged and the air is taken in through the nose when the diaphragm goes up then it pushes the lung and the lung get constricted and the uh, carbon dioxide is thrown out this is how the breathing happens so when we say deep breathing it has to the the breathing what we are doing should go to the navel should go to the belly button so when i am trying to speak passionately normally the belly breathing will happen the abdominal breathing will happen and that is how the breathing should be but it has to be always slowly and lightly so uh, i think i have covered enough about the breathing so kindly do three exercises and uh, now we will move on to the uh, math the math for me is a uh, not a running principle math for me the maximum aerobic function for me is a, uh, a more of a living life it is not only for running why it is for living life means that it, it is uh, talking about uh, a holistic system it also talks about uh, the pdca normally what we call that uh, uh, plan do check act so it talks about the entire process in systematic manner it has a very good measurement system it also has uh, your own correction factor there is no need of any coach there is no need of anyone who who to tell you that what sort of nutrient you need to have it is a self governing mechanism uh, that it gives it also gives you uh, some eight checklist for eight different pointers 
when we go through those checklists it will tell you that where the weak point is now coming to uh, the weak point area normally you might have heard that uh, we need to uh, enhance our strength and then uh, we should not worry about too much about our weakness and we should be focusing on our strength uh, for me uh, the believer of uh, theory of constraints principle i totally uh, differ and i should first of all focus on my uh, weakness and i should uh, sustain my strengths i should not be keep augmenting my strength and i should be focusing on my weakness i should be reducing my weakness right. why is so is because that uh, now we'll uh, take an example of a chain uh, what is a chain normally we wear a chain and it has got various links the chain is made of various links and when we to find out what is the strength of the chain normally we conduct a tensile force applied a tensile force or pull the chain on the both ends what will happen to the chain it is going to break in multiple places or it is going to break in one place so it is it is likely to break in only one place one particular link that particular link is known as the weakest link the strength of the chain is as stronger as the weakest link the moment we build the chain or increase the strength of that particular link then the entire chain strength will go up otherwise it won't go up if you keep modifying if you keep tampering if you keep improving on the other links nothing is going to happen to the chain strength the chain strength will remain the same as long as the weakest link strength so once you have improved the weakest link then again when you pull the chain it is going to break somewhere else because the weak point has shifted from one place to another place to another link now we need to focus on that link which is weaker so this is the principle one should follow in our life also in order to make continual improvement when we talk about constant improvement it is not about the breathing 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 no it is not only about breathing it is about that you need to identify what is um, specific weak area for you for example a yoga expert the person who knows entire thing about uh, breathing techniques and entire thing and probably not having any weakness in the breathing area may be having weakness for sweets may be having weakness for carbohydrates so probably the person has to improve on carbohydrates that is all i am trying to say if the person has to improve holistically so normally when we when we try to improve in many areas when we try to improve the focus the the, the list link this link and this link and this link we try to focus everywhere ending up focusing nowhere so it is always important to focus on only one area and that is the weakest area we need to focus so that we can able to improve this is the fundamental principle on which even the maximum aerobic function the map philosophy also exist the map philosophy has three pillars the first pillar is the exercise by itself the exercise by itself has one component called exercise and the normal runner the all the runners over here would know the the training means there are two training one is training and one is resting so the uh, training is always consist of training as well as resting this is about exercise portion of the pillar the second pillar is about uh, nutrition in this nutrition uh, pillar the diet pillar or nutrition pillar or food pillar there are four uh, links the one link is carbohydrates second link is uh, uh, inflammation the third link is vitamin and the fourth link is folate so let us focus on uh, uh, all the four links uh, in a short manner the carbohydrate uh, is one of the major uh, macronutrient apart from uh, fat and uh, we all know that the carbohydrate is one of the source of uh, energy but when we take more and more carbohydrate what happens uh, the body loses its tolerance for carbohydrates you may know that uh, when we take carbohydrate it gets immediately converted into um, energy if it is a simple carbohydrate even when you put it in the mouth so the complex carbohydrate uh, starts getting broken down with the further process of uh, uh, what do you call uh, digestion but whereas a simple carbohydrate gets broken down in the mouth by saliva by itself uh, i don't want to go into the further technicalities and uh, so this is how it happens when when it when such a instant sugar is getting produced and uh, uh, the in, uh, the in, the instant sugar is supposed to do what supposed to go into the cell so so when we have uh, when we have uh, carbohydrate the instant sugar 
is getting a uh, flow into the body and it is transported through let's say blood and it is supposed to reach the um, uh, thing that uh, cell there is a thing called uh, insulin the pan pancreas is a gland which produces the insulin the insulin is acting as a key chabi that's chabi in tamil and a hindi chabi that the 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 bank the insulin goes to the cell individual cell in every cell a small small cell there is a lock this in opens the lock and opens the pore the sugar goes into the cell this is how the process happens if the more and more carbohydrates are taken the cells would never get opened up even with the help of this in the insulin and sometimes even our body will become insulin resistant and normally we talk about diabetic uh, uh, type 2 diabetic especially i am talking about so uh, this is how uh, we need to be very very controlled in our diet and all those stuff so uh, um, this math philosophy talks about uh, a moderation of carbohydrate in a big manner whereas uh, the other nutrition uh, philosophy would be talking exactly contradictory opposite so i don't want to get into that uh, uh, contradiction but uh, believe in you that the limited carbohydrate is always be helpful you cannot have more carbohydrate now coming to the energy source the fundamental energy source is coming from uh, three different uh, form you know, whether you are runner whether you are a uh, walker or whether you are sitting at home and doing a, a normal job let's say uh, any job when you do at home or even you are sitting idle the you need three form of energy one is uh, fat and the second is uh, like what we talked about sugar or carbohydrate or whatever and third thing is creatine phosphate you may be knowing usain bolt like runners ben johnson usain bolt those runners those are sprinters who normally run 100 meters and 200 meters distance and these people in order to get the initial momentum they would be fully depending on creatine phosphate our entire body has a creatine phosphate of around 9 seconds maximum of 9 seconds so this would be utilized for the initial 2 to 3 seconds for the people like usain bolt uh, when they run and uh, um, that is how the creatine phosphate is used at beyond that uh, the anaerobic uh, energy takes place and then the, that is how the sugar is getting burned for the entire uh, run of 100 meters or whatever now what is the time limit at which the sugar is uh, present it hardly presents for 3 uh, minutes of our uh, uh, life sort of energy for example if we run for life let's say the cheetah is behind me and trying to eat me and i am running forward that point of time i can able to utilize sugar for 3 minutes and after that i am going to anyway fall down and then cheetah will come and eat me or whatever that would be our its choice so the third energy is about the fat if you take our entire body let's say a normal uh, normal person will be around 60 kg let me assume 60 kg weight and the normal person may not be a athlete a normal person will have a 20% of fat in the entire body mass so if the fat mass is uh, 20% then uh, assume for a moment that uh, 20% of uh, 60 kg is 12 kg and 12 kg is nothing but 12000 grams and 12000 grams multiplied by 9 calories per gram is approximately 1 lakh 80 1 lakh 8000 calories in our body of fully fat we can produce 1 lakh 8000 calories when we go for a normal walk uh, you would be spending around uh, 150 calories or so or if you are going for a run it will be uh, 300 calories or so how the calories are being calculated for example a person of 60 kg weight is running for 10 kilometers assume for a moment so 10 into uh, 60 kg 600 calories will be spent for example a 50 kg person is running for 5 kilometers then it will be 250 calories will be spent this is the science but the garmin watch need not show that maybe because of various other logics but this is pure science so uh, the so the, the sugar is maximum for 3 minutes and you are the when you are sitting idle your fat is getting burned so uh, when you are sleeping your fat is getting burned so the fat is fundamentally very very important but you may be again and again hearing the cholesterol is bad cholesterol is bad no cholesterol is not at all bad the cholesterol is very very good it is doing lot of function in our body and uh, 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 that is how it is very very good so we talk about the ldl is bad no ldl is not bad when it is getting oxidized it is bad but the oxidation is again caused by the uh, food and all those uh, wrong breathing or over breathing or whatever it is so we, if we are careful about the food and uh, breathing then even ldl is not bad so it is always important that uh, 
the blood check and all those things are important to do but even more important is to do uh, two or three vital checks for example you know how to measure your height it is well known to you you cannot uh, grow beyond a point normally uh, that is not a, a station there is a fixed number for a person who is already 20 years old or so now the second measurement is somewhere around uh, your navel where the belly button is there you should take a measurement of this in a normal uh, uh, exhale inhale median portion not the fully inhale or exhale but normal portion you should measure this is what we call as waist level and this butt the maximum of the butt when we measure normally that is known as hip size so the waist waist by hip for any female member should be less than 0.5 yeah so uh, in order for you to be healthy and in order for the family to be healthy uh, in order for the society to be healthy so you need to maintain these sort of basic parameters like uh, the um, hip, uh, waist to hip ratio has to be less than 0.85 for uh, uh, female members and less than 0.9 for male member and the second metric which is very very important which you can do on a daily basis or once in a month it's very good is that your uh, uh, waist to height ratio Uh, so you have to take the waist in centimeter you have to take the height in centimeter divide it if it is less than 0.5 then you are really doing good so if not you need to focus on your food so this is the fundamental aspect of carbohydrate and uh, the fats when you are taking the fats you should always use maximizing the omega 3 fat and omega 9 fat omega 6 fat like uh, sanula safola and all those uh, vegetable based oils are not at all good they are all packaged oil not good go for cold press oil sort of thing and uh, vitamin d uh, you need to go under the sunlight and maximize your exposure at least for uh, half an hour in the morning so that the cholesterol which is uh, beneath your skin can able to absorb your uh, uh, sunlight and then the vitamin can be generated and it can be uh, useful for producing other vitamins as well if you keep drinking only uh, keep taking other vitamins but not vitamin d it's of no use so you need to have the fundamental vitamin d in order to uh, make use of the other vitamins as well then coming to folate the folate is maximized maximum available in spinach uh, any form of greens you should take and uh, that folate will be very good you might have keep hearing that word called folic acid which is uh, very very bad so any folic acid should not be taken so what i was saying that uh, if you if you take a uh, folic acid Uh, not all our genes almost 30% uh, people have a, a genetic flaw it cannot absorb folic acid the moment you take in folic acid as an external supplement it gets uh, jammed it, can, it cannot get metabolized and it forms a free radical and that is where we get cancer so normally we talk about three three nature of death like uh, pith uh, pithum is one thing a second thing is some uh, uh, more of a breathing issues and there is one more death what normally we say in the past but now one more thing got added is cancer so we need to be very very careful in our food and our breathing and all our uh, stuff so uh, we can prevent cancer so this uh, free radicals should be killed how these free radicals can be killed is by taking the antioxidants the antioxidants the fruits are very good in uh, antioxidants beetroot is very good in actually antioxidants so these sort of uh, fruits and vegetables uh should uh, should prevent that uh, so, sorry it should uh, nullify the effect of uh, free radicals the moment you allow the free radicals to combine then uh, you will get that cancer as well that should be avoided yeah so, uh, not all about running it's about living uh, a holistic life in terms of nutrition in terms of uh, exercise and now uh, the question coming up under sunlight is normally always good in the morning or maybe in the evening but not in the mid uh, mid sun but if only you have time in the during the mid noon you cannot expose yourself more than 5 to 7 minutes or so do not expose yourself more than 5 to 7 minutes you should not be uh, going under a sun stroke so the time has to get reduced from 30 minutes to 5 minutes or whatever but now um, coming back to the point of the third pillar we spoke about exercise pillar we spoke about nutrition pillar the third pillar is about stress the stress has got three elements one is uh, stress by itself the second thing is brain and the third thing is aging aging is a natural process but we can prevent by taking fresh fruits preventing the free radicals and all those stuff uh, junking the junk foods then coming to the second element which is brain there are various ways by which we can able to improve the brain by using the alternate hand normally if i am right hander i should start using my left hand as well the brain activity will improve then if you don't cook then go and cook the brain activity will improve if you are not playing any finger based music go and start playing finger based music then it will improve your brain then if you don't love people then start loving them if you don't love yourself start loving yourself it will improve brain so there are various ways uh, by which we can able to uh, improve the uh, brain including by following your own passion 
but now coming to the the stress part i am a common man i normally keep telling my people that uh, i am a common man when when we say i am a common man i have full of desires i have full of ambition i have full of aspirations i have full of expectations i have full of comparisons to be made so the comparisons and expectations are very very bad that is what people say but i don't believe in those i have full of comparison comparison is one of the normally the corporate language is known as benchmarking so benchmarking cannot be done if you don't compare so you need to compare so i should compare only about myself no that is not a natural tendency of a human being human being will compare with the other human being you may you may like it or not i am tend to compare with myself with my wife or with my children or my neighbors or poor it may be i will compare similarly there is a thing called expectations for example there is a friend who may be not wanting to know about that uh, let's say birthday or anniversary or something like that i have expectation that people are not wishing me on my birthday or my anniversary these are all expectations these are very quite common can this be avoided no you should not even avoid this you are, you are supposed to expect from your friend a birthday or uh, uh, what do you call um, anniversary wishes these are all expectations but what should not happen he is getting bogged down by these expectations and uh, comparisons so we need to find out that how we can able to improve ourselves but not getting bogged down you should not keep your expectations high and then fall low no you should keep high expectations we normally we talk about uh, if you aim sky then you'll get moon and all those stuff which means what you are supposed to expect very high but when you fall when you don't meet the expectations you are not supposed to feel bad about it don't brood over try to control try to do that is why the i think even get in get fit also conduct lot of meditation lot of yoga lot of pranayama so these are the things which will be very very useful to mind our stress if something is needed um, uh, change your uh, pattern routine which will reduce your stress for example uh, i thought i believed that my longevity my uh, thing will be improving if i quit my job so none of my family members are earning now i am sitting at home i am doing time pass but then uh, this is giving me lot of benefits i i am not uh, stressed at all so i am living a peaceful life so uh, you need to have uh, some financial freedom to make yourself uh, stress free so this is the way i think uh, we should go about it whether in life whether it is walking whether it is cycling whether it is swimming whether it is running or uh, the, this is how the way of life has to be uh, so uh, I, i just want to tell you a small story uh, i'd like to take two more minutes there is a 15 year old boy who is coached by an old man this 15 year old boy always uh, keeps a very high high expectation and he expects that people should uh, uh, clap and applaud so there is a competition in lot of villages you may be knowing in tamil nadu that there are normally we talk about 18 villages padinattu patti or whatever so uh, all those villages are uh, gathered around and one such uh, uh, event is taking place and then this boy is participating in the event and then he is running he uh, he wins the race and many people all the people uh, uh, is applauding him then again the boy coming to the starting line now he wants to participate in the second race now the old man who is the coach he is sending a fresh bunch of people to compete with him with the boy of the 15 years old he again runs the race and then he wins all the people applaud him he then he comes back now again he uh, he looks at the old man and old man uh, thinks now he sends uh, two people one uh, old man and one old woman so this boy thinks that why these people are uh, uh, made to pitch against me and then anyway i'm going to win hands down and then he starts the race obviously he wins the race and then uh, the old man and old lady are still at the starting line he finished the race and uh, he got a goose bump of his life and then thinking that everybody would be clapping and no one is clapping and uh, what is the difference every time he wins the race he was getting applauded and now he is not getting the applaud he comes back and then checks that why he is not getting the applaud from the old man the coach coach says that uh, now you run one more race and then in this race the specific guideline is given to you you should take them along you should hold them by hand you should take along the old man and old woman and then make them cross the finishing line together so all three are running the race and now and then all three are crossing the uh, finishing line at the same time though it is bit delayed and now everybody is giving a standing ovation so uh, he comes back and asks the coach the old man uh, is this uh, is this uh, applaud is for me applaud is for me no it is not for you it is it is because of the process the process of running the race you are running together with everyone so the life is a race and when you cannot say that the life is not a race it is going to be a race you need to run together that is the principle he says so uh, with that thought uh, i would lead, lead to keep the floor open and uh, uh, that comes the end of my uh, session as such you guys have any question you can uh, go on with it
Awesome, awesome, uh, SN. Uh, it was uh, absolutely fantastic to listen to you today. Uh, what is more amazing is the the story which you ended up with, uh, and uh, this is a true story which happened at the Para Olympics uh, when few people were asked to run and one child falls down, and uh, we think that you know Olympics is all about winning the race, right? But uh, all of them stopped, went back to pick that person up. and all the five of them ran the race together to make it a uh, standing ovation so uh, it was an awesome session listening to you sn and thank you so much i guess uh, many of your friends have joined in and thank you so much friends for uh, joining in um uh, uh, an initial part of get in get fit series is all about uh, you know having a kind of a like mindedness and i would like to thank kripakar sir uh, kripakar sir was a person who introduced me to sn and thank you so much sir because without you would we wouldn't have been able to meet such an amazing person like anna trajan sir and uh, sn right from the start about the three different types of breathing and how you can actually improve your lung capacity going into the science of it and uh, helping us understand a little more better and generally i say uh, you need to earn your health e a r n where e stands for exercise a stands for positive mental attitude r stands for good uh, sleep or rest and n stands for nutrition so e a r n which is exercise attitude rest and nutrition so uh, and it has to be a holistic way of living it just cannot uh, happen uh if you're compromising on one aspect you will uh, get affected on the other so it is to have a holistic way of getting to good health so thank you so much uh for all your word, uh, words of wisdom and uh, i would now uh, uh just try to post few questions which has been uh, posted by few of our uh friends for you so i will just be reading those questions for you and uh, probably you can give your expert opinion uh we have a uh, kripakar sir and he is of course asking you what is the best time of the day to be under sunlight and how long we need to expose to sun and for how many days in a week of course this is not associated with running so uh, kripakar ji actually uh, as i mentioned that uh, half an hour a day would be good enough uh, preferably in the morning sun is always good and um, uh, mid noon sun if you are there is a only time you are exposed to then probably you can uh, go and take a walk for 5 minutes or so and then not beyond that because more than that would be uh, sun stroke whether you eat in chennai or mumbai or any weather conditions so the point is that uh, if you are not getting enough sun then there is no other choice the entire wholesome food may not be giving you uh, that sort of vitamin d then probably we depend on uh, the other source of vitamin a either through tablets or whatever it is um uh, that's about it uh, kripal ji and one more special i have saw... another question from kannan sir yes. uh, he says very well explained about nasal uh, nasal breathing but i was told even mouth breathing is good while running what is your opinion on that yes uh, kannan sir actually uh, normally uh, we all know that you also advise us that we need to go for uh, uh, 20% of uh, speed runs and 80% of uh, slow runs so the 80 20 principle normally what we follow in those 80 percent of runs we should be doing nasal breathing only there is no need of any um, uh, mouth breathing in the 20 percent of runs uh, for example even in uh, uh, let's say the tempo run or even the speed interval run the first speed interval and the initial 1 or 2 kilometers of tempo run you can still go with the nasal breathing so long as it is nat- natural to you try to uh, make it as a practice so that it will become a natural natural th- uh, thing to you and from third kilometer onwards or from whatever you are uncomfortable with from that point of you can always you you normally go with your mouth breathing but mouth breathing is not a good thing but that is the only choice left at that point of time of fast running and every one of run is not a fast run in race nothing is seen you you go and give your full best uh, whether it is mouth breathing or uh, whatever breathing and then uh, i am talking about that normal life live, living life and normal slow runs you are supposed to follow nasal breathing nasal breathing helps you with uh, nitric oxide Uh, which in the introductory also mentioned that that is one of the uh, fundamental uh, aspect of the nasal nasal breathing that we produce nitric oxide when we do the om chanting also all these vibrations produce that uh, nitric oxide in a 20 fold manner normally when we do the nose nasal breathing we produce only 150 uh, nitric oxide parts per billion air what we breathe 
whereas when we do the om chanting with the, all those thing closed and then uh, do the om chanting the vibration produces 20 times higher which means 3000 parts per billion of air what we are breathing that is the power of nitric oxide which should be going in which is more of a first defense mechanism of our body thank you so much sir uh, mr dharma prakash is asking you uh, just give me a second how long it will take to improve the pace in maf running and normally uh, normally uh, uh, everyone is unique and uh, let's say that uh, if we can able to identify where is our weak point and how we can able to improve the first 10 running days will improve your pace uh, to give an example when i started of running in the math uh, i used to run at a 14 pace for those non runners i just want to tell what is 14 pace it is 14 minutes for 1 km 14 minutes for 1 km a walker will know it doesn't take 14 minutes it takes hardly 9 to 10 minutes by even walking but i used to run at 14 pace when i started my first day the second day third day fourth day fifth day the 10th running day would have given me 9 pace which is 9 minutes per minute now currently uh, after year after year a uh, four months of uh, uh, thing i do i have come down to a level of uh, 625 pace or so uh, in the math uh, region so um, we could not able to cover much of a math as such then whoever wants to have clarity they can either contact me through messenger or through my number sir another question uh, by mr sanjay rajput he asked which type of foods we should eat for fat requirement so basically uh, as i told you the omega 6 you should avoid before even talk about the intake you should know what is to be avoided what is to be avoided is uh, like let's say the sunola safola all those uh, rice bran oil should be avoided what should be taken that till tail what we normally call that uh, uh, refined sorry, what do you call that till tail l n i or till tail i don't know l n i l n i is uh, tail, that you should take and the cold, the cold press cold coconut oil you can take then even though even though the butter and the ghee are supposed to be omega 6 you can take that as well so long as it is a homemade uh, uh, high fat milk you should buy and then take the fat from that and then you should use the six the brain itself is full of fat only so do not worry about uh, fat so you have a good fat omega 6 is have coming from fish oil so omega 3 is coming from fish oil that can also you can take the uh, the nuts what we call as that uh, almonds walnut chia seeds all those have uh, omega 3 and omega 9 based uh, thing the the uh, egg yellow yellow don't miss the yellow that is a chol cholin gives a lot of good uh, uh, fat so you should have that as well egg gives a very good protein as well if you are an egg eater uh, do not miss out that yellow portion also yeah excellent uh, sir uh, yamini is asking you can you suggest nutrition oil for cooking as we are marathi people and we need full uh, meal uh, so see this uh, this uh, i do not know sarsota sarsoka tail is one that kadugu and mustard oil or whatever that you can use mustard any oil, oil which any any oil which is a cold press oil start trying to use those oil avoid all those uh, bottled oil what we are getting from uh, shops so don't even donate to your uh, house self please don't spoil her as well so do not spoil him also so you try to use only this sort of uh, cold press oil and uh, coconut oil and extra virgin olive oil so all those stuff can be used for salad extra virgin olive oil can be used and the coconut even if you take coconut more and more coconut the hard shell coconut that is also good uh, fat that should all that can also be taken true yeah. i guess uh, as much as natural we can go especially co- uh, coconut oil yes. has a lot of ketone bodies which is as pure as a mother's milk so it's very good even if you just take a spoon of pure coconut oil uh, uh, it uh, definitely uh, you know prevents you from getting alzheimers or parkinsonism i mean it's a it's a lot of research has gone into that so uh, yeah. some more information uh, and questions uh, srinivasan sir is asking will good breathing techniques help us in improving our vo2 max absolutely see vo2 max I, I, i did not want to take this session only for runners so i slightly deviated from vo2 max now vo2 max is what it is the maximum oxygen uptake what you can take in one minute so uh, if you if you keep doing this uh, uh, breathing exercise the more the more oxygen uh, deficit you try to create what we try to do that exhale holding is nothing but uh, you are trying to create some sort of oxygen deficit when we were children we used to normally breathe when we grow up we forgot the technique of uh, breathing so when we create some oxygen deficit 
it is going to uh, increase the carbon dioxide presence and it is going to increase your tolerance towards carbon dioxide it is going to dissociate the oxygen from the blood it is going to go into the cell it is going to improve your vo2 max obviously so uh, if you think that more and more oxygen uh, if you breathe and that is what is going to help no there are some dead spaces dead dead spaces in the nose in the throat and all uh, it is supposed to be a dead space but the moment you breathe in more the unnecessary air will go and uh, park itself there and the alveolar capacity what we talk about the the alveolar efficiency should be, be go down dramatically if you don't take much of an oxygen if you take minimum oxygen what is what where minimum is required then you are going to increase your alveolar efficiency and thereby you are going to improve your vo2 max the moment you are going to reach a bold score of 40 your vo2 max will be at its best awesome awesome uh absolutely fantastic explanation uh, being a doctor being a medico myself uh, i absolutely enjoyed uh, the session uh, sn and uh, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule and uh, you know spending this uh, uh, awesome uh, saturday morning with all of us Uh, i would uh, now uh, advise all of you to unmute and if you want to thank sn uh, you can and uh, before i uh, do my concluding uh, remarks so i have taken a lot of screenshots sn i would be sharing them with you many of them have a lot of good words to tell for you so i've taken thank all the shots yes, sir, and it's i will definitely nice uh, be there uh, sharing it with you patients yes i enjoyed thank you thank so you, much sir, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Nice. I'm just providing the number. If somebody wants to contact me, they can contact me, and then I can provide more information. Sure, time will be short. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I'll be also sharing the number with whoever contacts yeah, me. Thanks a lot, sir. Yeah. Understanding from SM. Yeah. It was Dr. an excellent Dr. session. Vidya, thank you really very much for arranging this. So oh, thank you and so Dr. much. And Dr. Vidya, you can uh, really arrange again this uh, essential session. It is really very nice. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Thank you, Dr. Vidya. I guess for every week, uh, week after week, we have amazing uh, expert speakers for all those who have joined in for the first time. Uh, and who would like to hear all our forty-two sessions or forty-three sessions which have passed by? You can just follow us. Uh, my name is Dr. Vidya Hari Ayer. You can follow me on Facebook by the same name. And if you are very active uh, at Insta, it is Dr. Vidya Hari. I would uh, just write it down: uh, Dr. Vidya Hari Ayer on Facebook and Dr. Vidya Hari on Insta. It's uh, spelled as uh, Dr. D R. Vidya is V I D Y W A H A R I I Y E R, and on Insta it is D R V I D Y A A I H A R I. So uh, it's a pleasure getting to know all of you through this Get and Get Fit series, and I hope all of you join us for a golden uh, celebrations, which is uh, slated on uh, July 10th, and. Uh, keep following us i guess uh, we want to make this world a better place to live in by spreading as much as pos uh, positivity as much as hope as possible that we will get in uh, and you know get fit and fight whatever fights we have in future too so thank you so much sn once again on behalf of the get in get fit series uh, and my get in get fit team we have judlin who uh, does the recording and uh, makes it into a video so that we can see it again and we have pramod who shares us the link and to all my get in get fit members uh, uh, this couldn't have been possible without all of you and thank you kripakar sir once again for because of you this was possible today and thanks to all those people who joined in and made this a grand success thank you so thank much you. have a great weekend and take care of yourself stay safe just few Thank concluding you, remarks Vidya. as a dentist uh, i just thought i would uh, say because all of you are wearing masks and covering your nose and your mouth see that your masks are uh, washed if it's they are washable masks and uh, brush your teeth twice daily because there's something called mucormycosis which is coming up uh, it is in all colors so i'm not going to get into much there 
but just to tell you if you're going to breathe well eat well sleep well and take care of your oral hygiene you're all going to be safe so let's look at our ways of prevention and uh, protection uh, rather than uh, you know things of cure for cure so i would always end by saying prevention is not uh, better than cure it is also cheaper and safer than cure so take care shaba khair good evening uh, good night uh, because uh, i'm going to say uh, uh, you know take care right now but just to tell you that uh, all of you have been a great audience and love you all take care thank you thank you bye yeah na bhi mujhe loot kar thank you pranjana